I would like to thank the organizer, Ayan Shantan, for giving me the opportunity to talk in this uh, online discussion meeting. Um, today, I'm going to tell you about the basics of what is called the chiral kinetic theory and its applications. Um, recently, novel transport phenomena associated with the chirality of elementary particles has attracted increasing attention not only in the context of heavy ion physics, but also in the uh, uh, context of matter physics, uh, cosmology, and also uh, astrophysics. Maybe uh, you may heard of the so-called chiral magnetic effect, which is one of the uh, well-known examples of the chiral transport phenomena. But actually, the history of this uh, chiral transport phenomena is very old and uh, goes back to uh, uh, 90. Uh, sorry, 1979 and uh, 1980 uh, by, uh, by the paper, uh, the paper by Alexander Birenkin. Um, and uh, recently, with the help of the application of the holography or gauge gravity duality, a new type of uh, chiral transport phenomena called the chiral vertical effect has been discovered. And more recently, effective theories describing these chiral transport phenomena such as hydrodynamics and kinetic theory have also been developed and uh, they are the uh, chiral hydrodynamics and chiral kinetic theory. I think the next speaker, uh, Yuji Hirono, is going to tell us about the recent developments of uh, chiral hydro. And in my talk, I will mostly focus on uh, the chiral kinetic theory. So, here is the contents of my talk today. I will first review the chiral transport phenomena, and then I will discuss how the chiral anomaly and the chiral magnetic effect can be incorporated in the framework of the kinetic theory, that is a chiral kinetic theory. And uh, as a direct consequence of this chiral magnetic effect and the chiral kinetic theory, uh, we discuss a new type of plasma instability called the chiral plasma instability. Then after briefly mentioning the relevance of this chiral plasma instability in co-grown plasmas, I will then turn to the physics of uh, uh, quark supernova explosion as an application of this chiral kinetic theory. Okay, so let us first start with uh, the transport phenomena, the chiral transport phenomena. And uh, I think you should be familiar with the, the very daily life uh, transport phenomena, that is uh, ohmic current. Uh, the electric current is induced by uh, the electric field, and uh, this is uh, electrical conductivity. This is uh, known as the ohmic law. And also, we know that if we have a gradient of temperature, then the heat current flows uh, proportional to this gradient of temperature, and this is, uh, this is known as the Fourier's law. Okay, so they are the classical and familiar example of the transport phenomena. But in relativistic systems, uh, there can be uh, different types of transport phenomena due to the chirality of elementary particles. And one such example is the so-called chiral magnetic effect. The chiral magnetic effect is a vector current or the electric current in the direction of the magnetic field uh, in the presence of the chirality imbalance between right-handed and left-handed fermions. Here, mu r and mu l are the chemical potentials of right-handed and left-handed fermions. And uh, this, different, this difference of the chemical potential is uh, uh, denoted as mu a, as a chiral, chiral chemical potential. Alternatively, there can be uh, 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 axial current at finite uh, vector-like chemical potential in the presence of the magnetic field. And this is called chiral separation effect because this current is, uh, uh, this current expresses the uh, separation of chiral charge. But you notice that this transport coefficient one over two pi squared in chiral magnetic effect or chiral separation effect are the uh, same uh, con same constant that appears in the coefficient of the chiral anomaly. And actually these transport phenomena are topologically quantized. 
as I will show you later. And uh, there are several ways to derive this chiral magnetic effect. But uh, here I will give you a, 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 a one a hand waving derivation of this chiral magnetic effect by Nielsen and Ninomiya in 1983, which clarifies why the chiral magnetic effect is related to the chiral anomaly. Let us consider uh, 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 right handed fermions and left handed fermions at finite densities. So here is a picture. So we originally have the fermi sphere of right handed, right handed fermions and the fermi sphere of left handed fermions of the same size. Now we turn on uh, electromagnetic fields. Okay, then according to the chiral anomaly, uh, the uh, uh, right handed frame sphere expands while uh, left handed frame sphere shrinks according to this chiral anomaly detection, right? In other words, in this case, uh, the chemical potential of right-handed fermion is, becomes larger than the chemical potential of left-handed fermions by transferring the fermions from left-handed fermisphere to the right-handed fermisphere. Now, uh, transferring a fermion from left-handed fermisphere to right-handed fermisphere requires some energy cost, mu A. So this mu A is a chiral chemical potential multiplied this delta QA and uh, delta QA is given by this chiral anomaly relation. And this energy cost uh, must be surprised, supplied from somewhere, that is a uh, uh, electric current, the so power uh, delivered by electric current expressed, expressed by Ej dot E, okay? Such that this uh, energy conservation relation is satisfied. Then by substituting this chiral anomaly relation into this energy conservation relation, uh, we notice that the electric field in both hand sides cancel out, and then we eventually obtain the expression of the electric field in terms of this chiral chemical potential mu A and magnetic field B. So this is nothing but the expression of the chiral magnetic effect. From this argument, we understand that why chiral magnetic effect and chiral anomaly are related to each other, and also why this uh, transport coefficient one over two pi squared is equal to the uh, coefficient of the chiral anomaly. Also, this is uh, hand waving. The important property of this chiral anomaly and also the chiral magnetic effect is that uh, they are exact non perturbatively and that they are independent of the energy scale that we are interested in. In the case of QCD, uh, for example, uh, this provides a stringent constraint on the uh, property of QCD at low energy. Because chiral anomaly is independent of the energy, the chiral anomaly must also be explained uh, by pions at low energy. And at the low energy of QCD, is the, uh, 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 the low energy effective theory of QC, QCD is the chiral perturbation theory for pions. And the, uh, uh, the term that is, is responsible for the chiral anomaly is known as the Bessel-Zminovic term. But in the case of in medium quantum field theories, uh, there can be different types of uh, low energy effective theories, such as the kinetic theory and the hydrodynamics. And the kinetic theory is effective theory describing the in and out of equilibrium of a system. And typically, uh, the validity of the kinetic theory is limited to the uh, low momentum scale compared with the temperature and the chemical potential. And another is uh, hydrodynamics, um, which is also uh, uh, effective theory at long distance and long time scale compared with the mean free pass or mean free time. And then one can naturally ask uh, how chiral anomaly and chiral magnetic effect can be incorporated in the framework of kinetic theory and hydrodynamics. And in fact, the conventional relativistic kinetic theory and relativistic hydro miss uh, the effects of chiral anomaly and uh, chiral magnetic effect. And only recent years we understand how 
such effects can be incorporated in, in this uh, framework of effective theories. Okay, before going to explain the formulation of chirokinetic theory, let me briefly mention the possible physical systems where this chiral magnetic effect or other chiral transport phenomena can be relevant. The first example is the electric plasmas in the early universe. Um, before the electric phase transition, the abelian gauge field that can propagate at long distance is a hypermagnetic field associated with hyper, uh, hypercharge. Unlike the conventional uh, electric, sorry, electromagnetic field. Because hypermagnetic field couples differently to right and left-handed electrons, this is literally a chiral plasma. Another example is uh, uh, gluon plasmas created in heavy ion collisions where topological fluctuations of gluons are expected to generate uh, local axial charges of quarks. And then we may have a chiral magnetic effect. There's also a, 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 a system uh, in condensed matter physics where chiral magnetic effect or other chiral transport phenomena can be relevant. That is a new type of material known as the wild semimetals. Wild semimetal is uh, uh, um, semimetals where wild fermions or chiral fermions appear emergently at low energy if we have a band crossing point. If we have a band crossing point near the band crossing point, the quasi particles are expressed by a, 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 a wild equation. And so, 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 so emergently, uh, the wild fermions appear emergently uh, at low energy. So this can be regarded as a three-dimensional analog of graphene. Finally, uh, neutrino matter realized in collapse supernova explosion is also a system where chiral transport phenomena can be relevant because neutrinos are only left-handed within the standard model of particle physics. And I will discuss this subject uh, in more details later. So let us discuss how the chiral anomaly and the chiral magnetic effect can be incorporated in the framework of kinetic theory, but let us first review what is kinetic theory. So if the system is uh, in global equi equilibrium, then it is described by thermodynamics. But the system is out of equilibrium, the statistical behavior of the system is described by the kinetic theory. Microscopically, um, each particle has some momentum, P, and is located at some coordinate x, and the motion of each particle is described by uh, classical equation motion with collisions. Therefore, it is uh, convenient to define the distribution function n of p, uh, which denotes a probability of a particle with uh, momentum p located at some coordinate x at some instant of time t. Then uh, the Boltzmann equation in usual metals uh, is given by this kind of equation. So N, N, N of P is a distribution function of uh, electrons in the case of metals and V is a velocity. And this is the uh, Lorentz force acting on electrons. And the right-hand side is a collision term. And uh, I will also give you the derivation uh, of this uh, Boltzmann equation. As I said, this was my equation is formulated in terms of the distribution function N of P. And for a moment, let us first ignore the effects of collisions. Then according to Liouville's theorem, uh, uh, the volume element in the phase space doesn't change uh, during its time evolution. So the time derivative of the distribution function is vanishing. And uh, we can expand this time derivative of this uh, distribution function in this way, right? Now, uh, by the equation motion, x dot is equal to velocity and uh, p dot is equal to the Lorentz force acting on charged particles. And then we get this equation. So this is uh, uh, 
uh, kinetic theory in the absence of collisions. But in the presence of collision, we generally have a collision, collision term on the right-hand side, and this is the uh, Boltzmann equation. And from this uh, Boltzmann equation, we can, for example, uh, compute the electrical conductivity for the ohmic uh, current uh, microscopically. But the problem of this uh, conventional Boltzmann equation is that this cannot describe the chiral anomaly no chiral magnetic effect because uh, there's no distinction between right-handedness and left-handedness. So it cannot describe chiral anomaly nor chiral magnetic effect. But this is a very important deficiency because in relativistic quantum field theory, we know that uh, chiral anomaly is a very important feature. That's why we have to somehow modify this uh, uh, conventional Boltzmann equation to take into account the chiral anomaly and also the chiral magnetic effect. In fact, what is missing here is related to the effects of topology uh, that, uh, that is related to the chirality of fermions. And uh, why, to understand why chirality is related to topology, let us uh, consider the fermions surface of right-handed fermions at low energy, as a, sorry, at low temperature, as an example. So this is a, a Fermi surface of right-handed fermions in momentum space. Now the point is that uh, by the definition of the chirality or right-handedness of fermions, the direction of momentum is always the same as the direction of spin, okay? Then if the end point of the momentum vector covers the whole Fermi uh, sphere, then it follows that the end point of spin vector also covers the sphere in spin space. This suggests that there is a non-trivial mapping from a spin, uh, sphere in momentum space to a sphere in spin space. Namely, there is some uh, non-trivial winding number, plus one uh, for, for right-handed fermions. For oh, left-handed fermions, on the other hand, by definition of left-handedness, uh, the direction of momentum is always opposite as the direction of spin. So if the end point of momentum vector covers the sphere in momentum space, then it follows that the end point of spin vector also covers the sphere in spin space, but in an opposite way. In this case, there is a non-trivial mapping from a sphere in momentum space to a sphere in spin space, but the winding number is minus one. And in this way, we can understand that chirality is a kind of, can be understood, chirality can be understood as a kind of topological invariant. So this is a, uh, this is a point. And this effect of topology can be captured into the framework of kinetic theory by using the notion called the Berry curvature. Um, the notion of Berry curvature is very well known in condensed matter physics. And the winding number that I explained in the previous slide uh, is, uh, is expressed by this homotopy group from two sphere to two sphere. For light and left-handed fermions, uh, this winding number is plus one, minus one, respectively. But for generality, we can consider generic integer k. Okay. Then this corresponds to the presence of magnetic monopole as the origin in momentum space, which has some integer charge k. And then we can also consider magnetic field of this uh, magnetic monopole in momentum space, uh, which is given by this equation. So this omega p is a, a kind of fictitious magnetic field in momentum space, and this is known as the Berry curvature. In fact, by uh, performing the uh, integration of a uh, uh, sphere in momentum space, then we get a, a quantized charge. Uh, we get a quantized very monopole charge. And this quantized monopole charge is plus one for right-handed fermion and minus one for left-handed fermions. So, 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 because, so the point is that because of the chirality of uh, fermions, we have a fictitious magnetic field in momentum space. And this uh, presence of a fictitious magnetic uh, field 
affects the equation of motion of a quasi particle. And furthermore, uh, the kinetic theory. So without the chirality of fermions, uh, the conventional equation of motion are as follows. X dot is equal to the velocity and P dot is equal to the Lorentz force acting on the charged particles. But what we, we have found is that uh, uh, for chiral fermion, we have an extra term uh, due to the presence of the very curvature. And if we, we have an extra uh, uh, fictitious magnetic field in momentum space, then we have a corresponding fictitious Lorentz force uh, acting on this quasi particle uh, expressed by P dot cross omega P. So this is a, a Lorentz force in momentum space, which, uh, which can be understood as a kind of duality between momentum space and coordinate space. So in, in the coordinate space, we have a Lorentz force X dot cross B, but in the momentum space, X dot is replaced by P dot and the magnetic field in coordinate space is replaced by the uh, fictitious magnetic field in, field in momentum space. Now, uh, we can notice that uh, these two equations are simultaneous equations in terms of x dot and p dot. That is, x dot is expressed in terms of p dot, and also p dot is expressed in terms of p dot. So we can solve this equation. And the results are the, as follows. x dot can be expressed in this way, and p dot is expressed in this way. And we have defined the factor of square root of omega in this way. You can see that uh, we have uh, uh, corrections expressed by very curvature omega in several places. Now, uh, given this equation motion, we can then uh, easily obtain the modified kinetic theory. What we have to do is to just substitute this modified equation motion into this uh, uh, equation, okay? Then what we get is this uh, kinetic theory. So this is the chiral kinetic theory. Uh, you can see that we have uh, corrections uh, in several places. And uh, without this very curvature correction, this kinetic theory reduced to the conventional Boltzmann equation. But now due to this uh, correction, uh, we can distinguish between, we can distinguish between uh, right-handedness and left-handedness because this very curvature has the opposite sign between right and left handed particles. And as I will explain uh, in a moment, this chiral kinetic theory can also uh, reproduce the chiral magnetic effect and chiral anomaly. Uh, precisely speaking, actually this chiral kinetic theory is not complete in the sense that uh, in the presence of the very curvature, uh, there's also a correction in the energy dispersion relation in this way. And this correction also uh, modifies the uh, 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 kinetic theory. But for simplicity, I will ignore this correction uh, uh, in this talk, just for simplicity. And uh, in the presence of the very curvature, the expressions of the uh, 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 particle number and also the uh, current are modified in this way. Here we have a modification of the uh, measure by the factor of square root of omega. And this is very similar to uh, the situation in general relativity where we have a, a modification in the measure in the curved space. In the curved space, we have a, a modification of the measure by a square root of minus determinant of the metric. And in the case of uh, chiral kinetic theory, uh, the measure is different from unity uh, due to the presence of the very curvature. And that's why we have a factor of square root of omega here. Okay? And similarly for the current. Now, uh, we can easily obtain the chiral magnetic effect from the expression of the current here uh, in local equilibrium. In this, uh, uh, integration of our momentum, uh, these two terms uh, cancel because uh, there's no preferred 
uh, direction in the angular integration. But uh, the final term can be non-vanishing, and we find that this final term leads to the uh, 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 chiral magnetic effect proportional to the magnetic field. And from this derivation, we can understand that the quantization of the chiral magnetic effect originates from the quantized uh, monopole charge K. Okay? And that's why uh, this chiral magnetic effect can be understood as a topological transport phenomena. Okay, uh, uh, let us now discuss the chiral plasma instability as a direct consequence of the chiral magnetic effect and the chiral kinetic theory. In the discussion of the chiral magnetic effect in the context of heavy ion physics, it is often assumed that the magnetic field is just external. But in a realistic situation, the magnetic field is dynamical. And in that case, one finds that chiral plasmas are actually unstable, and that is the chiral plasma instability. And this chiral plasma instability should be contrasted with the conventional plasma instability known as the Weber plasma instability. In the case of the Weber plasma instability, if uh, uh, the distribution function of a particle is anisotropic in momentum space, then there is a, a tachyonic unstable mode which tend to reduce this anisotropy in momentum space. But in the case of chiral plasma instability, uh, if there is a, a kind of anisotropy in chirality, that is a chirality imbalance, then there is a tachyonic unstable mode, which reduces to this uh, chirality imbalance between right and left-handed fermions. And the chiral plasma instability uh, has been argued in various contexts from the electric theory and the early universe and recently to gluon plasmas and neutron stars. And we can discuss this chiral plasma instability using the language of the in-medium quantum field theory. And the chiral plasma instability manifests itself as a form of a kind of collective mode. And in order to compute collective mode, uh, we need to know the polarization tensor pi mu nu. The point here is that in the presence of the chirality imbalance mu5, we have not only the parity even polarization tensor, but also the parity odd polarization tensor. And uh, without chirality imbalance, the polarization tensor can be decomposed by using the projection operators with respect to the uh, momentum, uh, the longitudinal uh, projector and uh, transverse projector. But uh, in the case with a chirality imbalance mu5, in order to decompose this uh, polarization tensor pi ij, we also need the additional uh, anti-symmetric tensor. And uh, from quantum field theory or chiral kinetic theory, we can uh, compute the polarization tensor proportional to this anti-polarization uh, tensor in this way. Uh, this was computed at, uh, by uh, so on to myself at the temperature and later at final temperature by Christine Emmanuel and uh, her student at that time. Now, uh, in order to understand the collective modes, uh, 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 we use a Maxwell equation coupled with linear response theory. For a small gauge field, the uh, current can be expressed in terms of the polarization tensor and gauge field. And by combining these two equations, we obtain a closed equation in momentum space. Here, I take uh, this A0 equals zero gauge, okay? And from this equation, we can get the dispersion relation of the collective modes. Uh, from now on, we will focus on transverse gauge fields because uh, the longitudinal gauge field doesn't change compared, compared with the conventional situation without the chirality imbalance mu5. They just receive device screening. In the absence of the chirality imbalance mu5, this uh, omega has an uh, imaginary uh, part, which implies that uh, uh, this collective mode is damped due to the absorption by the plasma. And this is 
uh, known as the London Darkwing. But in the presence of the chirality imbalance mu5, we have some additional term uh, proportional to the magnitude of mu5. And due to this additional term, the frequency omega has a positive imaginary part for small k. And this means that the gauge field grows exponentially. And this is nothing but the chiral plasma instability. And the typical momentum scale of this chiral plasma instability is uh, e squared mu5. I would also like to note that in the case of co-gluon plasmas in heavy ion collisions, uh, not only photons, but also gluons become tachyonic in the presence of the chirality imbalance. That is uh, no abelian version of the chiral plasma instability. And as I argued, the typical momentum scale of the uh, plasma, chiral plasma instability is uh, g squared mu5, or uh, length scale is the inverse of g squared mu5. And this length scale is much smaller than the mean free path of Gokron plasma in the weakly coupled regime. And this means that uh, this non abelian chiral plasma instability cannot be uh, described by uh, hydrodynamics because uh, this uh, length scale is much shorter than the mean free path. Uh, and, and I think this should be important very this should be imp very important phenomenologically because this means that the uh, no abelian chiral plasma instability occurs at a much shorter scale compared with any hydrodynamic mode such as the chiral magnetic wave and so on. So in order to understand the evolution of this chiral plasma in the context of uh, plasma, we have to understand the behavior of this uh, length scale, which may be described by the chiral kinetic theory or Langevin type uh, effective theory for gauge field. Okay, how much time? Uh, uh, 10 minutes at least, uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Okay, okay. Okay, so let me now turn to the problem of the uh, collapse panel by explosions as an important application of this chiral kinetic theory. So what is quark-collapse supernova explosion? The quark-collapse supernova explosion is uh, an a, a energetic explosion of a giant star at the end of their evolution. And this uh, explosion eventually leads to the neutron stars. Uh, phenomenolo phenomenologically, this uh, quark-collapse supernova explosion is very important because it released chemical elements to the outer space. So without this uh, supernova explosion, all of us would not be here. However, the mechanism of this quark collapse supernova explosion has not been fully understood so far. When the massive star collapses, most of the gravitational binding energy released is carried away by neutrinos. But neutrinos are only weakly interacting and so it is very non-trivial how neutrinos can transfer sufficient energy to ordinary matter such that supernova explosion occurs. Therefore, it is very important to uh, neutrino transport appropriately to reproduce the supernova explosion. Uh, currently, it is still difficult for the numerical simulation of the conventional uh, neutrino transport theory to reproduce this quark supernova explosion with the observed explosion energy. And for this reason, understanding the quark collapse supernova explosion has been uh, one of the wrong sounding problems in astrophysics. However, my point is that in the conventional neutrino transport theory, uh, there is a very important deficiency that is exactly the chirality of neutrinos. In fact, this supernova is a system with the largest party violation in the universe. A bunch of left-handed neutrinos are produced in the uh, process called this uh, electron capture, where uh, uh, electrons are eaten by protons to produce neutrons and neutrinos. Notice that this process is described as weak interaction. So uh, only left-handed electrons are eaten by protons and only left-handed neutrinos are produced. As a result of this uh, electron capture process, 
uh, only uh, we 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 have uh, there can be a, a, a chirality imbalance between right and left-handed electron, and also uh, uh, we have a chirality imbalance of neutrinos, and then one can expect that the dynamical evolution of this uh, 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 parity by rating system should be drastically different from the conventional uh, system with parity invariance. So let us consider the neutrino sector. We know that uh, neutrinos are typically just free streaming and because they are just weakly interacting. But uh, in the core of supernovae, the matter density becomes very high so that neutrino mean free pass can be very short. In fact, according to the uh, standard model of particle physics, uh, one can estimate the neutrino mean free pass to be of order one centimeter. Okay. And this one centimeter is still uh, very large compared with the microscopic uh, length scale. For example, uh, the length scale considered in the heavy ion physics. But here we are interested in the astrophysical system. And, uh, uh, and for example, the radius of uh, core of the supernova is roughly uh, 100 kilometer. And so this neutrino mean free pass is much, much shorter than the uh, uh, typical astrophysical length scale. This means that the hydrodynamic, hydrodynamic regime is achieved even for neutrinos, okay? Well, in other words, neutrino behaves like a chiral liquid with a giant parity violation, at least at the core of a supernovae, which is described by the chiral hydrodynamics. According to the uh, uh, nearly near beta equilibrium condition and also the charge neutrality condition, one can estimate the chemical potential of neutrinos at the core of supernovae to be roughly the nuclear scale, 200 MeV. And uh, uh, the maximal temperature of supernova explosion is roughly a few 10 MeVs, so that uh, neutrinos are mildly fermi degenerate at the core of supernovae. And as far as I know, this is the only place where condensed matter physics of neutrinos can be relevant in the universe. Outside the core of supernovae, the matter density is not so large, then hydrodynamic description for neutrinos may break down. In that case, uh, we can still describe the system by using the chiral kinetics theory for neutrinos. And neutrinos are eventually uh, free streaming close to the surface of supernovae and then es they escape from the star. Okay, and uh, here I would like to Notice that this neutrino matter in the supernovae is a kind of three-dimensional topological matter due to the topology that I explained previously. So it is remarkable to me that uh, nature has already realized uh, topological matter at the core of supernovae, well before our realization of topological materials such as uh, topological insulators, topological superconductors, topological semimetals and so on in tabletop experiments. Okay, so I think, okay, I have five minutes or something like that. So let yeah, me yeah, briefly- you have five to seven minutes. Mm -hmm. So let me briefly discuss uh, the uh, theoretical framework uh, 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 to describe the evolution of supernovae. As I said, uh, generically, hydrodynamics for neutrinos is not applicable, especially outside the core of supernovae. And the most general theoretical framework is given by the uh, hydrodynamics for ordinary matter made up of uh, baryons and electrons coupled to the chiral kinetics theory for neutrinos. And such a theory is given by the total energy momentum conservation. Okay, here T hydro is the stress tensor for the ordinary matter made up of baryons and electrons. And T nu is the stress tensor for neutrinos, which is described by chiral kinetic theory. In the conventional neutrino transport theory, they uh, apply what they call the radiation transfer theory or radiation hydro, where neutrinos are treated as a radiation field, but uh, without taking into account the effects of chirality. But here, 
we can take into account the effects of chirality by the use of the chiral kinetics theory. And uh, we call it the chiral radiation transfer theory. And uh, uh, we can construct this uh, 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 chiral radiation transfer theory systematically starting from the underlying uh, quantum field theory. Because of the limitation of time, I will only give you some uh, basic steps that, uh, uh, I will, uh, that, that I will follow. So, so, so you can find the details of, of this procedure in these papers. Uh, let us consider the Wigner function as lesser uh, written in terms of the uh, neutrino field psi. So this psi is a two component neutrino field and this S lesser is just a Fourier transform of this uh, uh, Fourier, transform, Fourier transform in terms of the uh, difference of the coordinates, right? okay? Because this psi is two component, uh, we can decompose this uh, Wigner function uh, by using the power matrices in this way, okay? And then we define this L mu. And um, now we can write down the Kadanov beam type equation for this L lesser in this way. And here we perform the gradient expansion or H bar expansion to the first order. Then we have three equations. The first equation eventually leads to the kinetic equation and the remaining two equations gives some constraint equation. And we can solve this equation perturbatively in terms of H bar correction in this way. And this F less size the distribution function. S mu nu is a, a, a spin tensor uh, given in this expression. And here we introduce a new vector denoted by N, N beta, which is called the flame vector. The reason why we introduce this flame vector is that we have a ambiguity to choose this uh, spin tensor S mu nu. And thanks to, thanks to this flame vector N, we can write down the chiral kinetic theory in a low length covariant manner. And uh, by further including the effects of uh, curved space time, we can also obtain the general relativistic form of the uh, chiral radiation transfer equation for neutrinos. But uh, again, I will uh, skip the details of this uh, derivation. You can find the derivation in our recent paper here. The point here is that uh, we can systematically derive the uh, quantum correction to the usual uh, Boltzmann equation. Uh, 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 using this beginner function formalism, okay? And this quantum correction is uh, uh, known as the side jump, side jump term, okay? But I will skip the details and, okay. We can also, uh, we can also compute the uh, 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 concrete expressions of the collision term, namely emission, late and absorption late based on the standard model of particle physics. Uh, for example, for this electron, we, sorry, uh, electron capture process and its inverse process. Uh, and, uh, and under certain approximation, uh, uh, we can analytically obtain the correction uh, in this way. Okay, so, 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 uh, so, but the, yeah, this is rather technical. So, so, so uh, please refer to our recent paper for the details. So let me finally briefly tell you what, what happens if we take into account the effects of the chirality in the evolution of supernovae, okay? So in order to understand whether supernova explosion occurs or not is related to whether sufficient energy is powered by nonlinear hydrodynamic evolution. And one such uh, uh, example is the turbulence. And actually turbulence is uh, abundant in our daily life. And uh, for example, if we have a rotating blade, then this produces a number of vortices. And we empirically know that uh, uh, the size of vortices becomes smaller and smaller. Uh, and this is called the direct energy cascade. But in the case of uh, chiral plasma, due to the 
chiral effects, such as chiral magnetic effects, the evolution of turbulence can be drastically different from the conventional behavior of turbulence. And for, to see that we formulated the chiral magneto hydrodynamics for the chiral matter in the uh, uh, supernova. So, 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 so this is just a usual uh, mass conservation law. This is the uh, uh, momentum equation. And this is the uh, induction equation for the magnetic field that describes the evolution of the magnetic field. But here we have a additional term due to the chiral magnetic effect. And the final equation is uh, describes the evolution of the chiral charge. So this is nothing but the equation of chiral anomaly. And by solving these equations simultaneously numerically, we can understand the evolution of turbulence for this uh, uh, chiral matter. And uh, so let me finally uh, 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 give you the, the results of the numerical simulation of this chiral magneto hydrodynamic turbulence. The left panel shows the evolution of the magnitude of the magnetic field, while the right hand panel shows the evolution of the X component of the uh, fluid velocity. So initially we have a small uh, seed magnetic field, but uh, they they uh, they merge into a larger, la larger and larger uh, structures. So eventually, uh, the structure is bounded by the box size. So, so, so this shows that originally we have a small structure, but uh, by the turbulence, uh, the energy is transferred from a small scale to a larger scale. So this is completely opposite to the conventional turbulence that shows the uh, direct energy cascade. So the point here is that the chirality, the microscopic property of elementary particles drastically different the macroscopic turbulent behavior. And we believe that this should be very important for to understand the uh, hydrodynamic evolution of supernova. Okay, so let me uh, summarize my talk. And uh, here's the summary. Although I, I have focused on the chiral uh, kinetics theory for fermions, uh, we can also generalize this chiral kinetics theory to, to spin one photons. And uh, recently there have been uh, several works. We are also preparing some new paper. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Thanks Naoki for this wonderful pedagogical talk. Uh, so we have, we have, it's time to take questions. So, uh, we have the first two questions by Shamapan Bhaduri. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first question is, uh, are you taking neutrino mass to zero in the chiral kinetic theory? Yeah, and here we, uh, yeah. Yeah, for the question one, uh, I effectively take neutrino, we, effect, we ignore the effect of neutrino mass. In the context of supernova, the neutrino mass is uh, eight, of, eight order of magnitude smaller than the typical energy scale. So I think this should be negligible. Okay. Okay, so his second question is, if you can explain the origin of chiral instability. I think he's trying to ask for a physical picture. Okay, okay, so I, yeah, that is a good question. So let me give you a physical argument how chiral plasma instability occurs, okay. So suppose that we have a, a chiral imbalance characterized by this uh, chiral chemical potential mu5 uh, uh, in, as an initial state, and then consider the perturbation of the small magnetic field in some finite region, okay? Then the presence of this uh, perturbation generates the chiral magnetic current along this uh, uh, direction of the magnetic field. And then this current generates the magnetic field according to the Ampere's law, okay? So we have also a magnetic field along this direction. And again, by the chiral magnetic effect, we have a current along this uh, magnetic field. And this uh, induced current further induces the magnetic field in this uh, direction according to the Ampere's law, which means that the original infinitesimally small magnetic field provides, uh, 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 provides uh, uh, positive feedback to the uh, uh, original magnetic field, and, uh, which means that we have instability. So this is a very 
uh, how to say, this is a very hand waving argument why chiral plasma instability occurs. Is that okay with you? Or? Shamapan, you want to extend the question? Ah, he says it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe I take this question first, Shantan's question first. Maybe Shantan, mm -hmm. you can ask yourself. Hi, Naki. Thanks Hi. for the wonderful talk. Uh, hi. So I had a question. So uh, in the context of nonlinear plasma instabilities, uh, mm -hmm. so we have this uh, very unstable uh, medium at mm -hmm. initial times. Mm -hmm. But uh, is it very well known how it goes to a hydrodynamic regime and what is the time scale for it or the mechanism? How it does? Uh, it's not known. It's not known. <laughs> That's his answer. So, so. In fact, in our paper, we formulated uh, the theory to describe this chiral, no, abelian chiral plasma instability, but uh, we don't actually know how uh, it eventually connects to uh, uh, hydrodynamic regime. It, the mechanism is not, not known. I think no one has ever studied this problem in details. So I think this should be investigated in the future. And I had a related question. Is this time scale related to this uh, some uh, equilibration you, you, time or some hydrodynamic time? Oh, uh, you mean this 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 eventual time scale? Time scale. Yeah. So this so this time scale is a time scale of this exponential growth, and uh, this can be computed using the uh, quantum field theory or chiral kinetic theory, and uh, and uh, so so this time scale is comparable to the mean free time. Yeah, and then the, the problem is that in the hydrodynamic regime, as I said, this, scale, this uh, typical length scale of the non-abelian chiral plasma instability is much shorter. And so we don't see, we cannot see the hydro, uh, this plasma instability in the hydrodynamic regime. And uh, so it is possible that this chirality imbalance is smeared, smeared out in the hydrodynamic regime, but uh, no one knows. That is just one expectation. I had a related question. Uh, mm -hmm. May I ask? Or... Sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, in a non-abelian plasma, in the initial times, we have both these phaleron transitions as well as a strong magnetic field. So, is it uh, well known that? Uh, uh, how much um, effect will come from these external electromagnetic fields to this uh, instability and how much will come from this phaleron transitions? It means the external abelian, the effect of this external abelian magnetic field on this no yeah, abelian. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That is also not known. And uh, yeah. I haven't seen any work on that direction. That may be an interesting question to ask. Okay. And uh, also, are those phaleron transitions directly affected by the magnetic field? Or it is, ah, sorry, I can't hear you it well. It is uh, insensitive. So, uh, sorry, could you say uh, once again? Those phaleron transitions. Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. OK. So are those phaleron transition rate also changes uh, as a function of magnetic field? That Though is, it is possible. Not a, uh, like, yeah. it that is in principle possible, I think. Okay. Also, yeah, in the in the conventional discussion of spherical rate, I think this uh, the effect of this non-abelian chiral plasma instability has not been taken into account, so that it may also affect qualitatively or quantitatively, even without the external magnetic field. So, in the in the viable instability, you know, what we did to try to investigate the long time behavior of the viable chromo viable instability was to do numerical simulations. And the basis for that was to sort of take the results for the self energies that we got uh, in that case and, and upgrade it to a full effective Lagrangian, which then allowed us to, um, to, to do the numerical simulations. Has a similar step been done in this context? 
So Did you just write down that Lagrangian. So, yeah, effective Lagrangian one or Langevin type effective theory. You know that uh, Bodeka formulated uh, Langevin type effective theory to describe mm -hmm. the uh, uh, describe the physics at the magnetic scale, g squared t. And similarly, we can formulate a Langevin type equation for this magnetic scale, g squared mu five. And in that case, we have a kind of effective Lagrangian uh, uh, associated with this uh, chiral chemical potential expressed by a chance Simon term, mu five a dot b, mm -hmm. where a is a non abelian gauge field. And uh, I think, yeah, I think that, yeah. By using that effective theory, one should be able to numerically uh, right. understand the It would be evolution. interesting to know what the end, end state of this is, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, an, another question related to the physics on the slide that's currently up, right? So eventually there will be scatterings, right, from the collision term in your, in your chiral transport theory, right? And if the rate for those, uh, for basically changing left to right and right to left is too high, then you you will turn off the instability, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this, so 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 there's a, a helistic conservation, and uh, uh, so maybe I can explain it, it also using this schematic picture of chiral plasma instability. I explained that. Uh, uh, by using this picture, how chiral plasma instability appears, but uh, I only explain how this initial small magnetic field grows exponentially, and uh, what is one can ask what is the fate of this uh, exponentially growing magnetic field, right? And what happens is that if if magnetic field grows exponentially as a function of time here, then now by the Faraday's law, we also there is also a, a induction of the electric field in this direction, okay? And this uh, induced electric field is the opposite direction as the magnetic field here because of the minus sign here. And now by the chiral anomaly, uh, if we have uh, opposite electric and magnetic field, then uh, this chiral charge is decreases, is decreasing as a function of time. Mm -hmm. So what the chiral plasma instability does is that uh, uh, is to decrease this chiral charge mm -hmm. and by the helicity conservation, this uh, helicity of fermion is converted to the helicity of gauge field. Uh, this, and the helicity of gauge field is, yeah. So, so, so the, the total helicity is conserved, but the helicity of fermion is decreases, is, is, is decreases such that uh, helicity of gauge field grows. So I have a related question. You have not uh, discussed the chiral vertical effect so far in your talk. Uh, is it possible to also uh, take not directly? Actually, not it, yeah, it's indirectly uh, taking into account the physics of neutrinos because neutrinos are charged neutral. So neutrinos do not directly show the uh, chiral vertical effect. But for example, in this formulation, the effect of chiral vertical effect is incorporated uh, for the neutrino in the neutrino chiral radiation transfer equation. Okay, so we, we have a quantum correction using this uh, effect called the side jump term, which is, which is responsible for this chiral vertical effect. So chiral vertical effect is uh, incorporated and can be incorporated in, in other system as well not limited to this problem of neutrinos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's somehow incorporated in the Wigner function that you discussed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, also, yeah, also in this uh, uh, derivation, yeah, sorry, I skip how the chiral anomaly and chiral vertical effect can appear from this uh, chiral kinetic theory, but uh, using this formulation, one can also deproduce chiral vertical effect. And the uh, chiral vertical effect is uh, related to uh, this uh, magnetic moment also. So in that case, one has to uh, carefully take into account uh, the contribution from this uh, magnetic moment that I skipped in this uh, talk. But one can do that. 
Okay, so there are two more questions. Uh, Ashutosh is asking if your if your kinetic theory is classical or quantum, and if you can have an H H bar like expansion. What yeah, is yeah. so 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 this is the kind of semi-classical theory. So in the conventional Boltzmann equation, uh, there's no H bar correction, but uh, here we we incorporated the uh, H bar correction by this uh, very curvature. So this is a uh, Quantum, kind of quantum correction. So what we have done here is a kind of semi-classical de description of the equation motion for a quasi particle by using this uh, correction of the very curvature. Uh, can I ask a little bit? Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. how do you then include the spin? Because yesterday we are uh, watching this Amre such talk, and uh, uh, so here in semi-classical way, how do you include spin in your uh, this kinetic equations? So the effect of spin or chirality was incorporated through the effect of this very curvature that I explained here. Okay. So as I said, this very curvature knows the physics of the of the chirality, right? So this 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 is related to the spin degrees of freedom, and by this yeah through this omega p the very curvature, the kinetic theory knows about the spin degrees of freedom. Okay, maybe I because we have running short of time, maybe uh, we have to uh, only time for one question, which is uh, kind of very pertinent or very urgent. So please unmute yourself and ask if you have something to ask. Yeah, I think there is also a question from Abhishek Shah about is about mean free path of neutrinos at early universe. Is it comparable to the size of the universe? So, so, so I think he's asking so, about whether it is relevant for early universe physics, whatever you have discussed. So typically, as far as I know, uh, people discuss the effect of the chirality of fermions of electrons mostly. Uh, so as I said uh, here, I discussed the relevance of chiral transport phenomena in the uh, electronic plasmas in the R universe, but uh, people mostly focus on the chirality of charged electrons. I, I, I don't know, I don't know, uh, I don't know any work uh, focusing on the effects of uh, chirality of neutrinos so far, but yeah. I'm, I don't know. Okay, but, so uh, I think, but but yeah, but in, uh, but I think in the R universe, neutrinos should also be summarized, and uh, and uh, one may also consider the chiral vertical effect for neutrinos and how this may affect the evolution of the universe, for example. But uh, yeah, one can yeah one should be able to consider that question as well. Yes. Yeah, so I was uh, just thinking, also asking a similar question. If suppose if you have very strong gravity, gravitational fields, can this chiral vertical effect can create a similar um, uh, similar kind of instability in presence of very strong gravitational fields? Just for the sake of I don't know whether it's relevant phenomenologically or not, but just you a mean of the inst instability due to the chiral vertical effect. Yeah. Uh, I, I have once considered that problem, but uh, I couldn't find any stability associated with chiral vertical effect. Uh, so somehow the physics of the chiral magnetic effect and chiral vertical effect are different in that uh, while chiral magnetic effect leads to the, this chiral plasma instability, while chiral vertical effects uh, doesn't seem to lead to any instability as far as I computed. So you computed this HTL like correction uh, to the graviton uh, Not, loop. Uh, so I consider so so okay so so precisely precisely speaking, I did not take into account the effects of gravity. But what I have done is that uh, I have computed, I have investigated the uh, evolution of the fluids because chiral vertical effect is expressed in terms of the fluid of velocity, right? Uh, the vorticity omega is expressed as the rotation of the fluid of velocity, so that we one one can uh, solve the coupled equation uh, 
in terms of the local fluid velocity b and I, I i didn't find any instability but i think that issue may be related to what yuji hirono is going to tell us about next and i think he is also uh, going to talk about some kind of new instability related to the fluid velocity okay so maybe one last question Okay, there is in fact one. Is there any role of chiral electric separation effect in the context of this instability? Chiral electron, chiral electric by chiral electric separation effect. You mean the uh, yeah, maybe you axial can ask current, axial current induced by the electric field. Yes, uh, yes, the axial current uh, generated uh, due to presence of electric field. So that. That, that can affect that can affect quantitatively. Okay. Uh, so here, sorry. So here I uh, formulated the chiral magnetohydrodynamic equation to describe the uh, evolution of the. Actually, this formulation also uh, describes the evolution of chiral plasma instability. But here we ignore the effect of the uh, uh, axial current here. So, so this is a, a, just a chiral anomaly equation, but for simplicity, we ignore the effects of the axial current. So divergence of J5 is put set to be zero just, uh, but, but, but uh, if you have a, chiral separation effect or chiral electric separation effect, then there should also be a contribution here, right? And then that may quantitatively affect the evolution of the system, but uh, we ignore that contribution here. Okay, so I think it's time to move on, but before that, let's thank Naoki again for this wonderful pedagogical talk and this nice discussions.